At this stage, the unitive person marvels at the intelligence and perfection of all of creation. The mundane becomes the supernatural. The supernatural is not something that exists in some other dimension. This is the supernatural. Ordinary life is the supernatural. There's a deep appreciation of the fundamental mystery of everything. You realize that nothing can be known because being and truth are prior to knowing. You actually can't know the truth. You can be the truth. You are the truth. Truth is, but the knowing of the truth creates a duality between the thing being known and the knower of it, such that that already creates a split and therefore breaks the truth. To get absolute truth, you have to you have to heal that split to unify all possible dualities and splits such that there's only a single unity left. When there's a single unity, you can't quite say that you know it because there's no longer a knower and an it to be known. You become it. You merge with the thing that you're trying to understand. The thing that you've been trying to know your whole life, you cease trying to know it. You cease trying to grasp it with your mind, but rather you become it, you merge into it, and then it's just one. You realize you were it the whole time. Every object, word, thought, and feeling, and sensation, and theory is now understood to be a human construct, separating out, creating boundaries where none exist. Giving names to experience and making distinctions is now seen as necessary for human growth, study, interaction, and communication. But... At the source, there is nothing to distinguish. Ultimately, there's literally no difference between anything. There's no difference between a taco and a kangaroo. Other than in your own mind. Reality only consists of differences that you conceive of or imagine in your own mind. The unitive person feels tolerance, compassion, and affiliation with all manifestations of life. She respects the essence of others and therefore does not need them to be different from how they are. She is in tune with goodness, truth, and beauty. She has visionary experiences and comprehends things in holistic ways analog ways, in addition to grasping them through the filter of the personal ego and rational thought. The unitive person has great wisdom, as opposed to high IQ or specialized technical knowledge. See, a lot of uh, expert and achiever stage people, they don't understand this distinction between wisdom and consciousness versus high IQ. And they tend to really value high IQ, uh, but they don't realize that you can have a very high IQ, but you can also have a low level of ego development, or you can have a high IQ, and you can have a low level of consciousness and wisdom, or you can have a, a sort of an average IQ, or even a low IQ, but very high wisdom, and uh, very high consciousness. And so this, 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 preoccupation that we see online with people getting obsessed with IQ scores. This is very, very unhealthy. This is stage uh, expert and achiever levels of looking at the world. That's the wrong metric. The right metric is how wise you are. What we need is a wisdom test, not an IQ test. And just because you have a lot of specialized knowledge in science or in physics or in computers or in mathematics or whatever, this, this is a completely separate variable from your consciousness, your wisdom, your capacity to love, and your stage of ego development. All of this is way more important than any kind of specialized technical knowledge. The unitive person has the ability to channel deep insights and wisdom directly from source or universal intelligence. You develop a personal relationship with source and universal intelligence. It's almost like you're able to speak to God telepathically. But of course, it's even trickier than that because the one you're speaking to is yourself. 
So it's not like God is up there in the clouds and you're you're imagining talking to God. Rather, you yourself are God. So when you're talking to yourself in your own mind, you are talking to God. But you can develop a sort of a high bandwidth connection where you are able to channel. You know, God can talk to itself in in sort of low fidelity ways and high fidelity ways. So you can develop these high fidelity channels to tap into superhuman levels of intelligence, wisdom, insight that will just blow your mind. It's really, this is one of the most appealing aspects of this stage is to, to, is to be able to, to develop this high bandwidth connection to universal intelligence. It's, it's almost like going from, <laughs> from the old internet of the 90s that used to be dial-up modems. You, you, you young Zoomers, you probably don't even know what that's like to, to, to dial up on the internet um, to a website. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm just I'm just reminiscing about the good old days of AOL and and uh, how I would go to eBay, log into eBay through AOL, <laughs> waiting for that stupid dial-up connection. Anyway, so yeah, so there's that that way of interacting with reality. That's most people, by the way. Ninety-five percent of humans have a dial-up connection to universal intelligence, such that they don't even perceive it as universal intelligence. And then some of us have a gigabit connection. I actually I recently got gigabit internet in my in my house. I got a new house with a gigabit internet connection. Uh, and I before that, I had a pretty fast, high-speed cable connection. But when I upgraded to this gigabit connection, oh my God, it, how it changed my life is amazing. So this video right now, on my old cable connection, which was still high-speed, it would have taken maybe 12 hours to upload a two-hour video. Now, I can upload this video within 15 minutes on my gigabit connection. It's amazing. <laughs> it's worth it. Totally worth it. Mm. So that's what it's like. You can develop this gigabit connection to universal intelligence, and then you can get all this wisdom and insight. And that's why, if you're wondering, how can some of these teachers like, you know, Sad Guru or Eckhart Tolle or whatever, these mystics and so forth, or maybe you wonder, how, well, Leo, where do you get all these insights? It seems like you could just talk for hours and hours and hours and your insights don't end and you have just all this profound wisdom pouring out of you. How do you do it? Well, I just developed this connection. It's completely intuitive. I, you, you become conscious enough that you develop this intuitive connection with universal intelligence and you, you just get, it doesn't stop. It's just like a torrent. What you, what you see for me, what I'm able to actually communicate to you, I don't even have enough energy really to... to to articulate all of my insights. I get so many more insights. I maybe only articulate five or 10% of all the insights that I get on a weekly basis uh, from universal intelligence. I'm just bombarded with them. It's, it's so much. I have hundreds of pages, thousands of pages of notes of insights. And even that, all my notes are just a small fraction of all the insights that I get. I, I get so many, I can't write them all down. So that's, to me, that's one of the most rewarding things in life is, is that. And one of the things I hope that actualize already helps you to do is to develop this sort of connection. It feels amazing. 